Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We are a show that broadcasts live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30. We're a show that highlights successful stories of businesses and business people in Hawaii and some of the organizations that support them. Uh, today we're going to have a, a very successful story of a program uh, that is run by Debbie Zimmerman who is over, uh, um, no, I'm not going to say this right, but Alili? Alele. Alele. Uh, ambassador program over at the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Uh, and uh, she brought with him Dr. Jeff Akaka today. Uh, and they're going to share the story of, of that program and how successful it's been uh, for bringing conventions into Hawaii. Uh, but to start off, uh, Debbie, can you give us a little background on yourself? Um, sure. Are, you've been in Hawaii a long time? Yes, I came to Hawaii in, oh, 1986. So it's, you know, 30 years now, 31 years coming now. Right, so you must have been very young at the time. I was mm -hmm. very young at the time. <laughs> it was, uh, I was working for Hilton in Manhattan, and I had asked for a transfer west. Wow. And so I was thinking west was anything west of central Pennsylvania, and they called me up one day and said, would you consider coming to Hawaii? That's about as far west as you can get. That's about any further <laughs> west I'd be east. <laughs> so I took that job, sight unseen, and moved to Hawaii. And what were you doing with them at the time? So um, when I was at Hilton, I was representing all the Hilton hotels um, in a national wow. sales capacity. But honestly, it was a telemarketing job. Mm -hmm. um, so I call people and tell them I'm the national sales coordinator for the Hilton, Ho Hilton Hotels Corporation, but I was really a 23-year-old looking for business uh -huh. on the phone, and they could see that I was successful at telemarketing, and they thought I might work well in Hawaii, where we have to do a lot of telephone sales. Right. So they, uh, they shipped me off to the 50th state. Well, and that's a great way to come. I mean, they, I would imagine they, they paid for most of the move, Yes, right? they did. Yeah. And they put me up in the Hilton Hawaiian Village for a month. Nice. You know, and fed me, and they took care of me. So, right. it was, yeah. And how long were you at the, the village? I was at the village for 12 years, always <coughs> in convention sales. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that, that you cut your teeth and got your experience uh, yes, in Hawaii. Yes, I did. At the Hilton Hawaiian yes, Village. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Uh, and then from there? So, then after I had my second child, I was um, thinking that, you know, the hotel business, uh, you know, hotels never close. No. They're open 24 7. seven. Yeah. It's very uh, labor and hour intensive. So I. Especially conventions. They tend yes. to go on late at night exactly. and on weekends and holidays yes. and, yeah, tough business. So I retired to be a full time stay at home mom. And uh, the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau called me up and said, Listen, we know you need flexibility in your schedule, um, but we'd like to have you help us with Hawaii Convention Center sales um, nice. because we have this new convention center and you've got a lot of experience. And so I said, well, you have this program, your ambassador program, mm -hmm. and it's a program in name, but it, no one's ever staffed it or worked it. Um, that's something that I would like to engage in if I were to work for you from in a home-based capacity. So uh, they said, great, give us a con we'll give you a contract and uh, let's start. Nice. And it was supposed to be a little flex time, home base, part time job. And I did that for four years. And by the end, I was working full time with two people working <laughs> for me. So. But that's a good home based business to have. It's uh, a great home based business. Successful. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. Great. Yes. So, you know, um, there's a lot of advantages to working in your home. You can work, you know, uh, very flexible hours and you get a lot of work out of me in the evenings and on the weekends. Well, you have to be disciplined about it, too. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. especially when you've got young ones running around. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, uh, are you still doing that, or are you back okay, now? Okay, so w after I, I retired a second time, um, <laughs> because that business was getting so big, and I really did need to you know, spend time with my kids, and so I took a 10-year break in my professional career wow. to raise my children. So you did nothing for 10 years? Well, nothing well 10, meaning yeah. you raised the children. I raised yeah. my children. I, I, I really took a very unusual path. I uh, became a homeschool mom, which would be a whole other show. I never expected to go wow. there. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, after 10 years, 
you know, they were done with me and I was in danger of being <laughs> a helicopter mother. So I needed to go back to work and thankfully this position was available for me to apply for and I applied for this contract um, to run the program again and I've been doing it for another three years. All right, so now you're back into the workforce again. I'm back again. into the world, yes. And, and so that's, that's a good story all by itself, as you mentioned, yes. because you, you were out and then, then you were able to come right back in and yes. you hit the ground running. Yes, so. exactly. And I think you come back with um, a lot of enthusiasm. When you haven't worked for 10 years, it's a privilege to yeah, work. It's good. a privilege, yes. Well, I think whether you've out for 10 years or not, it's always or should be a privilege to work, period. Yes. You know, I mean, everybody should be fortunate to have a job. Um, so anyway, you're back in the workforce, you're doing well, you're running the ambassador program yes, now. Exactly. And I guess uh, Dr. Akaka has been uh, an active participant in this uh, ambassador Dr. program. Dr. Akaka <laughs> is our, what we call them, an Ali'i Alele. He's the highest wow. level. And he was actually one of my Alele from back in 1999, right? Uh, well, 98 was when I wrote 98? 98, 98 yeah. was, in, yeah. yeah. So we've wanted, he's been with the program since its inception. So you, you've you not let him go this whole no, time. No, <laughs> no. He, he's just been a terrific benefit to our state. Oh. The contributions that he has made, hundreds of millions of dollars wow. of economic impact to our state because of his volunteer efforts in our program. Well, that, that's yeah. impressive. And, and you've been doing this for how long, Dr. Akaga? Yes, yeah, since 98. 98. Yeah. I thought it'd be a great idea if we could get the American Psychiatric Association membership. The, the membership is about 38,000 nationwide, and we take care of people with psychiatric uh, conditions. Uh, I thought it would be good if we could get all of them to come to Hawaii for one of their annual meetings. It would be, yes. Yeah. And you made that happen. Well, uh, me and a whole bunch of other people. You know, nothing ever happens with one person alone, and having Debbie was, was priceless. You know, whenever projects that are that big, that meeting returned 47 million in visitor spending. Wow. We spent about $3,000 to get it here. You know, I'd like to make an investment yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that, that's yeah. tremendous. But um, literally, we would never have had the American Psychiatric Association Convention if we didn't have the intervention from a passionate LLA doc like Dr. Akaka. So just explain, can you walk us through, how did this all happen? I mean, to take a $3,000 investment and to balloon it up to $40 million. I mean, how, how did you do that? Uh, well, I guess it stems from where I came from. You know, my, I, I was born into a family of servant leaders. You know, mm -hmm. Senator Akaka is my uncle. Um, the Reverend Abraham Akaka was my father. And uh, my, from when I was that high, it was always about community activism. And what are you going to do to benefit your community? Mm -hmm. And I thought, what better way than to bring a whole bunch of money into the whole economy? <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, the American Psychiatric Association has an annual meeting which travels around, had been in Hawaii uh, before, but not since 1973. Wow, and so I thought, well, it's about time they came back. So in 1998, uh, I approached the meeting planning department about coming, but they had a lot of concerns. And mm -hmm. so I thought, well, uh, maybe I could get some of the leadership um, interested in it. And I found out that the leadership of American Psychiatric, the president, vice president, the two, two guys running for president, the speaker, vice speaker, were all going to be in Hawaii for a meeting of the American Medical Association mm. in November of 1998. Perfect timing. And I thought, well, if they're going to be here anyway, why don't we show them how good a meeting in Hawaii would be? And I wrote a letter to Sandy Moreno who was at the time the head of the convention center, who I'd never met, but I asked her, would you sponsor a reception at the Waikiki Aquarium uh, to the visiting psychiatrists with hopes that they might consider bringing the annual meeting to Hawaii? And, and she did, and uh, she supported us. About $3,000 was mm -hmm. what it cost, mm -hmm. I think. Um, my, my cousin, um, Alan Akaka, who many might have heard the other day at the Capitol, he was too expensive. So I just, I hired one of his three-member <laughs> band, <laughs> and my wife sang at the reception, mm -hmm. and my daughter, Melon, sang, and uh, we had a lovely reception, but I also had invited the entire Hawaii legislature mm. to come in, and a reversal of lobbying. We had a Hawaii legislature lobby the leadership of American Psychiatric. We had, uh, uh, it, at the time, Representative Jerry Chang, Chair of House Tourism, uh, five members of the House, two members of the Senate, 
And they lobbied American Psychiatric to come to Hawaii, while at the same time, American Psychiatric lobbied the Hawaii legislature to avoid law that would be bad for psychiatric patients. See, that, that, that whole <coughs> effort should have been very impressive. That should yeah. have sent a strong message that, that we were serious in Hawaii about it making this happen. Oh, yeah. Well, the psychiatrists were especially impressed that not only did a half a dozen members of elected government officials show up at a psychiatric function, but they even allowed themselves to have their pictures taken <laughs> next to psychiatrists. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that got Hawaii on the radar screen. And it took four more years of educating and lobbying and creating data mm -hmm. showing that a meeting in Hawaii was indeed financially feasible. That's where we partnered very <coughs> closely together. You know, while he's on the floor of the convention lobbying for Hawaii, he would call me up and say, I need room rate information. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. can, what can you send me about these costs, you know? And so we were... I need floor rental space information. Uh, um, so real partnership, yeah. you guys yes. were working together yeah. there. Oh, yes. Yeah. We, the legislature very kindly um, uh, wrote, uh, passed a resolution formally inviting American Psychiatric to come, which I was able to present on the floor of the assembly wow. of the American Psychiatric. Look, another, even the legislature is asking you yeah, to come. Another strong yeah. message. Yeah. yeah. So um, having the involvement of your elected government and officials is really mm -hmm, important mm -hmm. in terms of raising the bar of visibility. And using that same... Uh, uh, that same uh, type of um, effort, we've been able to get numerous additional uh, medical convention meetings um, in the in the same way it's by having like a, a reception, like a spin-off type yeah. of uh, yeah. 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 So uh, a meeting of one organization might be in town where the the attendees might represent numerous mm -hmm. subgroups, but we have access to to inviting multiple subgroups to come. And by doing, uh, through that, we've been able to get the American Medical Association to come back in 2003. Uh, and then we passed a resolution that basically required them to come back. Uh, and they came back in 2007, uh, 2012, and they're on contract to come back in 2017 wow. and 2022. Wow. And that was Dr. Kaka <coughs> and the HMA delegation stepping in and getting this resolution passed yeah. to have the um, wow. AMA come to Hawaii every five years. Wow, and that, that's powerful. And, and you take yeah. the success, and then you can use that as an example when you go out to talk to other yeah. groups on exactly. how you made it work for them. Yes. Yeah. What was also helpful was that when the legislature found out how, how fantastic this was for the Hawaii uh, revenue stream and mm -hmm. tax base, more and more began attending the reception. So <clears throat> we did the, the next time AMA was here in 2003, we had nine members of the House, four members of the Senate, mm -hmm. and Lieutenant Governor Iona. And then in 2007, we had Governor Lingle. And then the next one, in 2011, we had uh, Governor Abercrombie. And at that one, Governor Abercrombie presented a proclamation to the AMA, declaring the week American Medical Association Week. And we had copies of the proclamation made for the, the president of AMA, president-elect of AMA, wow. the speaker, the vice speaker. You know, and, and you take this example of how it works, and then you use that as a template for, yes. for others. I mean, people would be lining up, or should be lining up, to try to take advantage of this. This is great. What's also helpful, though, is that the, the care of our, our patients, because legislators uh, don't often get a chance to talk to physicians yeah. in their offices, because physicians are too busy. So this, this affords the physician community an opportunity from the top physicians of the nation, uh, and in particular psychiatry, because psychiatric patients have historically gotten short shrift, you know, forever. Right. Uh, even though it's a brain disease, uh, not that different from epilepsy you know, and, or any others. And that's something that we'd like to come back to in just a second. I want to hold that thought, okay. but we're going to have to take a quick break, and then uh, we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the, the convention business here in Hawaii. Aloha, this is Kili'i Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance 
For those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet, please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today with uh, representatives from the, the tourism and convention uh, environment, the industry here in Hawaii. Uh, and we're talking a little bit about how to get conventions, uh, particularly we're talking about the healthcare side right now, but there's a, a lot of other conventions as well. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, psychiatry and, and the association, I mean, we've been very successful there. Uh, mm -hmm. We're bringing in that, those mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. Um, during break, we kind of got into a little bit of discussion about, uh, you know, some of the advances that's been made recently with the Affordable Care Act and, and mm -hmm. Obamacare that hopefully, if there are any changes made, that we'll be able to keep some of the psychiatric uh, benefits that's mm -hmm. been added to mm -hmm. the program right. that wasn't mm -hmm. there before. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I don't want to turn this into a healthcare <laughs> controversial, <laughs> yeah. let's just get back to the convention business yeah. a little bit. Um, so. How do you see this evolving? I mean, you've got, do you have a, a group of ambassadors you work with and yes. we've got all these people out there? Yes, we, we partner, you know, the medical meeting market is very, very important to us. And so we do partner with many physicians and the Hawaii Medical Association. And the AMA will actually be coming back again in November. And so that's another great opportunity for us to work to get the other specialty meetings. And right. we, I'll be working closely with Dr. Akaka and other HMA physicians on a strategy to, you know, to make sure we, we capitalize on that. But I also partner very closely with the University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, they have very, very strong department at SOAS, the um, School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. Oh, of course. And it's amazing how those people are magnets for conventions because of their global networks. Um, when I first started this program, uh, we tried to get the American Geophysical <laughs> Union Ocean Sciences meeting, and they told us we will never come to Hawaii. And I thought, boy, if we can't get the Ocean Sciences meeting, we should pack it up and go to the beach. Um, that should be a natural for Hawaii. And so I called, I cold called Dave Carl over at SOEST, and, and I asked him, you know, are you familiar with this group? And he said, Oh, yes, I'm familiar with the group. I'm going to the upcoming convention. I'm the keynote speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess I'm also a candidate for national president. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm a distinguished fellow. And so I said, great. Well, when you go to that convention, could you put in a good word for Hawaii? And so he went to the convention, and literally from the convention floor, the meeting planner called us and said, can I like to schedule my site inspection to come to Hawaii? Wow. And it was all because of David Carl's influence. So you got right to the head of the line there pretty quick. Exactly, <laughs> right? And so, you know, when we partner with our Alele, they are members of these organizations, Ohana. They're already political insiders. You know, I'm a paid salesperson, but Dr. Akako, he puts his professional reputation on the line when he recommends that the rest of the APA come and convene in Hawaii. So he's got to really believe in it, and they um, they take his uh, recommendation very seriously. Well, he's one of them. I mean, he's you're, one of you're them. in that industry. You've got the credentials. You've got the uh, the <coughs> credibility. So you're able to really open some doors with that. Well, it's really important for me that of all of the professions that don't take care of themselves, because they're so busy taking care of everybody else. You know, you get lack of sleep. You got dealing with this, dealing with that that they need to come to Hawaii to get restored. I mean, Hawaii is the most restorative location that any uh, physician yeah. could want to go to. Yeah. And that's what I hear repeatedly from the groups that do come here. Uh, they don't know how it's going to be, but once they're here, Mm. There's a completely different, relaxed yes. atmosphere. See that? That's an important selling. There should be a wellness component yes. to every one of the presentations yes. that are made about yeah. how you yes. can rejuvenate yourself exactly. by coming here. Yeah the, yeah, the feedback we got from the Hawaii American Psychiatric Association meeting over and over, 98% of the comments I got was, this is the best APA meeting I ever attended. Yes. 
And it was based on the strength of that that we got a, a renewed contract for right. them to come back in, in 2020. You know, we almost 21. always rebook these conventions once they come the first time. It's just getting them to come the first time, which is our major hurdle. And I would be negligent if I didn't also shout out to the John A. Byrne School of Medicine mm. because they are terrific allies for us too. So we're really dialing in to our entire um, local medical and scientific communities. Well, and, and all the synergies just make so much sense. I mean, to be able to come out and not only take care of the, the, the continuing education requirements and the networking that you're doing among the professional group, but then also they get to, to relax a little bit yeah. and, and de-stress. But then also the families have a lot of good, healthy things to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. While the others are, are busy doing their convention yeah. stuff. Yeah, I know of no other location where you can take care of your business from 7 to 3. And when the business is done, you go to your hotel and you go to the beach. Right. Yeah. No, nowhere else can yeah. you do that. One other important point I want to make is that Hawaii really is becoming the, the global center of relationships between America and the East. Yes. China, Japan, Korea. And it's really important for American medicine to share ideas and perhaps positively influence the kind of medical care that these other developing nations are right on the cusp of, of developing. And that's another really important reason for why every medical group you know, should come to Hawaii and work with the Convention exactly Center right. to attract medical societies, sister medical societies from Japan, China and, to come to Hawaii. And we are so fortunate because we have global marketing partners <laughs> representing Hawaii in Japan, in China, Korea, Oceania. So these are people right. on the ground, just like myself. They can help facilitate these relationships. They can help with travel arrangements. And increase attendance and at the increase meetings. increase attendance you know? at the meetings, yeah. yeah. Well, and I was just going to ask that. I mean, do these people that are in these different countries have ambassadors like Dr. Akaka that can actually go out and engage with? They're developing with? their networks right now. And that's always our plan is we use our LLA sometimes to help them find ambassadors in, in those countries. Well, and I, that's got to be a key to mm -hmm. the formula mm -hmm. is, you know, in China, Japan or Korea or wherever, you know, to get into those associations yes. and convince them to come. Mm -hmm. And if, if we could create this, this meeting place exactly. where everybody can come together, yes. I mean, that's, that's like the perfect world. Right. We have a meeting. It's called the um, American Chemical Society meeting. It actually started uh, maybe 50 years ago when the Japan Chemical Society was turning 100 and they wanted to do something special to celebrate their centennial. So they wrote the American Chemical Society and they said, you know, we're doing, we want to do something special for our anniversary year. Why don't we do a joint meeting in Hawaii? And they started the first year, they had about 3,000 people, and it was so successful. And then they said, well, we should do this again. And they said, well, if you're going to do it again, then the Koreans said, we'd like to come. And then the Chinese said, we want to come. And the Canadians came. And so for every five years, this meeting has been growing and growing and growing, and now it's 15,000 people. Wow. So from 3,000 to 15,000. 15, and it's and on rotation, and it's right around the third week of December, which is usually a very slow time in Hawaii. Perfect. And I would imagine that would bring in a few million dollars. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So if we can create more of these east-west type meetings, you know. Absolutely. That's, that's well, we're the perfect middle ground for that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and to the point of wellness you know, yes. in, the, in the environment. I mean, not only with middle ground, but there's so many other good, healthy things to be doing while they're here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Excellent. Right. Yeah. Uh, now we've talked a lot about the medical profession mm -hmm. and, and all the different associations. Um, do we have any other similar type of efforts into other industries? Yes. So of course, um, there's electrical engineering, okay. and we work very closely with the electrical engineering and the entire engineering school at the University of Hawaii. And so we go after a lot of meetings called IEEE, mm. um, or ACM, or American Society of Mechanical Engineers. You know, these are all part of our targets. Astronomy is huge. We've done many astronomy conventions. And that we would got make some sense, facilities right? here that we might hopefully show off someday. Yeah, yep, yep, that's right. And <laughs> uh, what's another show? And then um, Earth Sciences, 
you know, we book a lot of meetings related to volcanoes, you know, thanks to, to our um, expertise in that. And, you know, the University of Hawaii, they help us write the business case. If we're going after the American Society of Microbiology, as a layperson, I don't know what's of interest in microbiology in Hawaii, but when I partner with Ed DeLong or Dave Carl at SOEST, they can help me really craft a thoughtful bid that helps us overcome perceptions. That perception you know, challenges. There's, there's an industry that I've been giving some thought to, and that we do have sand erosion a little bit, right? Yeah, so that's the right. beaches are kind that's of disappearing. Right. I really think we need to have a bunch of CPAs out here to do inventory on the sand erosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so we got to, you know, and, well, and the, that's, the, that's a good point now, <laughs> Reg, because anybody that belongs to a professional organization can be in a lolly. So, you know, if you're a member of the AICPA, uh -huh. we invite you to, you know, contact me and we can work together on strategies to get these big uh, conventions. Sounds like a lot of fun. And this is something that we might want to do either pre-tax season or after okay. tax yeah. season yeah. <laughs> yeah. to get them to come out here. Yeah. But, uh, maybe even after tax season because I think they're probably pretty stressed out by the time exactly. April 15 right. or yes. 16. Right. So they need a break and some wellness, a healthy yes, dose of exactly. wellness. Yes, exactly. Right? That would be... Yeah, you know, having something in uh, late April or May might be good. Yeah. Well, American Psychiatrics meetings are always in May. So. Ah, well, that would be great to have the counselors there with the, the patients at the same yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to have to wrap up here in about a minute. Um, it went very fast. I think there's a great story here. Uh, any final words uh, before we, uh, we sign off? I mean, is there uh, anybody that you really, other well, than CPAs, want to reach out to? Yeah, well, you know, I guess the point is this is a community building. I look at the Hawaii Convention Center as Hawaii's formal living room. And so we want the community to have some say into the meetings that we host in there, the big citywide conventions. If they make sense, if they're going to advance economic development, for example, we just booked a World Aquaculture Society meeting, and they're going to be bringing in a, a lot of investors who might want to invest in aquaculture Absolutely. in Hawaii. Yep. You know, we want to use the center for broad economic development. So um, this is why we have the Alele program, so people in the community can have some input into the citywide conventions that we solicit. You know, for me, the most important thing is that we expose the entire world to Hawaii as the Aloha state mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to teach the, the world uh, about Aloha, that it's the unconditional regard for your fellow human being that seeks to do good to a person with no conditions attached out of a sense of kinship. You know, and I can't think of a better environment to come and, and gather and share ideas than a place like that. I mean, it's, it's perfect all the way around. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. Well, thank you, Reg. Uh, and this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we talked about the uh, visitor industry and the convention business here in Hawaii this week. Uh, we air every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week. Until then, aloha.